With Mario Golf Super Rush speeding onto Switches aplenty, we've only got one topic on our minds. What are we getting next? Humanity's attention span is truly appalling, but I can't exactly belittle anyone else because I'm just as excited for whatever content is coming our way as DLC. Last we chatted, Toadette came up as a potential contender in this tournament of superstars. But there's one all too important inclusion we cannot overlook. Diddy Kong has consistently secured a slot in the Mario spin-offs, schlepping a ride with his partner in crime whenever he wants to throw hands or hit balls. After he roughed it through both Toadstool Tour and World Tour, this Kong's making it his goal to snag the gold in Super Rush. Now, you might assume Diddy Kong would be sprinting across the course with his trademark agility. And you'd be correct! Despite his surprisingly lackluster speed in the Donkey Kong spin-offs, Diddy has repeatedly displayed an unparalleled swiftness in the Mario universe, and Super Rush is no exception. The only kryptonite to his celerity? Power. From a pathetic batting score in Sluggers, to a subpar drive in past golf tourneys, Diddy's strength lies in... well, not in strength at all. His strategy? Hit it fast and reach it faster. Like the other speed type characters, except for Mario, who just had to be special, Diddy has received a 5 yard increase to his driving range from Toadstool Tour, going from 207 yards in the GameCube days to 212 yards in the Switch era. Guess he's been working on his arm guns too. But if any of you have attempted to play as Diddy in Donkey Kong 64, you would know that steady steering is not his forte. Somersaulting and cartwheeling come with the territory for this Kong. That lack of direction is reflected in his middling control, but this hodgepodge of capabilities shifts ever so slightly when he upgrades his arsenal. With the Star Clubs in tow, Diddy's inferior strength is amplified. Unfortunately, it comes at the cost of his control, redirecting his shots with an unwanted frequency. Thankfully, he can utilize newfound levels of spin to help the ball travel farther or keep it from overextending its intended distance, regardless of where it winds up. The Superstar Clubs provide a further expansion of his range, but he has lost all sense of control. Diddy is the kind of character who likely requires strategy and on-the-fly improvisation should a shot curve more than expected. His spin falls just shy of his fellow speedsters, barring Yoshi, but it can still give him an advantage if you learn to land his shots just right. If Diddy needs a helping hand in holding a candle to his competitors, he need not look beyond the litany of inventions at his disposal. Like Robin and his utility belt, Diddy comes equipped with a number of tools that will blast him towards victory. For his special shot, Diddy fires off a popgun barrage. Not familiar with this fusillade of legumes? The peanut pop guns have been blowing up the scene since Donkey Kong 64, even traveling with Diddy to the world of Super Smash Bros. In this iteration, Diddy withdraws both pistols, shoving the golf ball into one and a pack full of peanuts into the other. Back flipping for added flair, this Kong opens fire while airborne, releasing both sets of ammo onto the fairway. Upon landing, the golf ball itself has no special properties besides an extended range. However, the number of peanuts scattered around the battlefield can create quite the unexpected layer of chaos. How? Because you don't know which peanuts can be consumed and which will incinerate your stomach. Whenever a character, Diddy or not, comes into contact with a peanut, they will either regain a sliver of energy or be blown to smithereens, losing both coins and precious time. But perhaps the explosives aren't enough. In that case, best to turn to his special dash, Barrel Jet Blast Off. Sacrificing his stamina to summon his trusty jetpack, Diddy careens through the course at breakneck speeds. But that pace causes his poor jetpack to malfunction, breaking it apart into three individual pieces after it overstays its welcome. The segments blast off in separate directions, exploding on impact wherever they land and providing an additional opportunity for Diddy to leave his opponents in the dust. If Diddy plans to take home the trophy this time around, he best suit up for his post-tournament photo shoot. I'm not of the mindset that monkeys need be deprived of fashion, nor will I let DK's egregious nakedness be continued in his sidekick. We're dressing Diddy to the nines. I have three separate costume concepts prepared for Diddy, 
each centered around a different color scheme and style. The first focuses on his signature color, red. Even before those golden stars were slapped on in Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's been swathed in scarlet since his inception. The first significant change comes from his headwear. Since visors are the norm in golf, I replaced the cap but kept his head covered in general. The high crown style, in particular, helps preserve the look of a hat more so than its flat top variant. The Nintendo, or formerly Rare, logo has been swapped out with a fancy sewn in K, for Kong of course, to help it look more like professional, branded merchandise. While this boy prefers to bum it, tournaments require a higher level of presentation. Thus, his tees have been traded in for dress shirts. Fear not, they're all short-sleeved at the least. This shirt is primarily white, with the blue and red floral accents there for an artistic and wilder touch. The piece de resistance is a single red and white glove placed on his dominant hand. The second potential outfit is my personal favorite, but it veers away from Diddy's conventional color scheme. While Nintendo tends not to do this, I'd assume for the sake of easy recognition even amongst casual fans of the series, they have dipped their toes in with the occasional oddball fashion commercial, and I think spin-offs like this could benefit from mixing up the conventional every once in a while. We're keeping the high crown visor, but we've swapped out that K for an embossed banana. The jungle patterns, representative of his island heritage, are more exaggerated on the shirt this time, and complemented by a pair of pink gingham shorts with a white belt. Last but not least, we have an outfit that returns to the red, but brings back the yellow of his shirt's stars, and adds in blue to round out the primary color scheme. The visor from the first outfit returns, but with the K replaced by a star pin instead. The dress shirt is navy this time around, but with white accents, and the pants are an argyle print containing white, blue, and red. It's overly simplistic for my taste, which means that Nintendo would likely go along with this design in comparison to the others. Which of our three costume sets do you think suits Diddy best? Or do you believe this wild child should stick to his regular attire? With his stats, skills, and costumes decided, there's not much left to determine for Diddy. I would wager to say we'll see him on the earlier side of DLC, but I doubt he would be an immediate inclusion. Adding in a Donkey Kong character could align with an upcoming reveal, if any of the 8,000 rumors we've gotten are true, to generate hype for his Mothership series. Now all that's left to do is wait and see if my predictions come true. Speaking of which, why not tell me what you're predicting to see with Diddy? Do you think he'll join the lineup or be left on the sidelines? And if he does barrel his way onto the course, how do you think he would play? I bet you've brainstormed an idea or two worth sharing. Be sure to keep an eye on this channel for more predictions, be it for individual character playstyles, entire roster lineups, or even for other games. Mario Party Superstars is coming soon too, after all. But until we adventure together again, go act heroic in your own communities, and go ape on the golf course. Thank you.